Hello everybody. Let's talk about the histology of the fallopian tubes. So we've already seen a histology of the ovary. The fallopian tubes are also called the uterine tubes. They are a pair of structures, tubular structures attached to the suprolateral corners of the uterus. So that is a fallopian tube on one side, all right? And when we take a section of the fallopian tube, we can see that it is made up of basically three layers. It has basically got a very simple structure, three layers from outside to inside. That is the first layer is called the serosa, this is the outermost layer. Inside that we have the muscularis and the innermost layer that you see is very, very characteristic of the fallopian tube and that is called the mucosa and it is highly folded. Let's see each of these layers one by one. So the serosa is basically visceral peritoneum. It has become a part of the mesosalpinx and like peritoneum, you can check out my peritoneum class, I'll link it below. Uh, it is composed of mesothelium and a thin layer of connective tissue. So that is your serosa. The next layer on the inside is your muscularis. It basically consists of two layers of muscles. On the outside, we have a longitudinal layer which is thinner and on the inside, we have a relatively thicker circular layer. So this is what helps the fallopian tube to move, right? The innermost layer is called the mucosa and it has got a really, really, really characteristic structure, multiple folds, which may be primary, secondary, tertiary folds of mucosal layers can be seen. And in higher powers, these folding can be better appreciated as you can see in that picture. So many, so many folds. And all of these folds are lined by simple columnar epithelium. But there is a difference, all cells are not the same. There are two types of simple columnar epithelial cells. One of them are called ciliated cells and the other are called peg cells, which I've drawn for you there. So peg cells basically do not have cilia. Their basic function is to provide nutrition to the ovum and to the zygote when it passes through. The ciliated cells are the ones which help in the transport of the ovum or the zygote or the sperm. All right, so that is what they do, the cilia beat and allow for the movement of these structures. So that is about the histology of the fallopian tube. In brief, I hope you liked that. Check out my other histology videos which I will be putting up. Thank you so much.